My name is Domenica Hall. I'm from Switzerland originally. I live in Bradley Stoke with my husband and I work for St Monica Trust, which is a retirement village in Westbury on Trim. I grew up in Switzerland in a very loving home and my mum, uh, she was Protestant and my dad was Catholic, but we were raised in the Catholic faith. My first real experience with Jesus was when I was about 10 years old. That was when we took our preparation course to receive the Holy Communion and um, we had to go for confession the day before. And I remember that day very clearly. I was so nervous to, uh, to give confession and afterwards how I felt just so, so warm and, and loved and, and relieved. And uh, it's quite funny because when I walked home, I sang all the I sang hymns all the way home. So God obviously had a, a real impact in my life at that point. My best friend invited me to a youth group, which uh, was an evangelical youth, youth group. We read the Bible together. We, we sang. We did lots of fun things as well. It's really nice for me to go there because we didn't have any Sunday school experience at all as, at all as children. But it was also the first time that I learned that one needs to have a, make a commitment to know the Lord, which obviously as a Catholic I never heard before. After a gap year in Canada, I started my apprenticeship with 17 as a chef. He kept drinking throughout the day. It was a very aggressive place um, and I had to live in staff quarters because it was too far away from home for me to get to work. So it was just a really unhappy time and I started going out with my work colleagues after work to nightclubs and bars, drinking and just my lifestyle changed completely and adapted to their style. Well, sin caught up with me and one day I stood uh, confronted with a really uh, terrible experience and, and situation and that's really when I remembered God again. I confessed my sins and I asked God that if he could help me in this situation, if he could help solve it for me. <laughs> it's a bit funny to ask God that but anyway I, I would then follow him and, and, and change my life. and. Uh, well, I expected judgment, but I did not receive judgment. Uh, God really gave me so much love that night, and I just felt his complete acceptance. And it was the first day at time I really understood in my heart, as well as in my brain, the sacrifice that Jesus really had done on that cross for us. I changed my life and God changed my life completely. He didn't just solve the problem, but he actually plucked me out of that situation. Um, he opened up an opportunity for me to transfer my apprenticeship, um, which was with my tutor, my college tutor. And I had such a good couple of years training um, and could go live at home again, which was really nice, and I could go back to church, and, and just life changed completely. And, you know, I really believed that God had answered that prayer and had taken charge. A few years later, I already had my two girls, um, but they were very small. I started with a back complaint, and that lasted for two years and the doctors didn't take me seriously, the x-rays didn't show anything up, the consultant thought I wasted his, it made me feel as I wasted his time, and, and it just didn't get better. And there were days where I, where I could not even stand or walk, and uh, in my desperation, I accepted help from a faith healer. And it was interesting because the pain really did go and, and I did feel better for, a, for some time. But then it came back again and um, one day I had some friends visiting and, and, and they said, you know, we've been, we've been really praying for you and, and we feel there's something not, not right. And so I confessed my session with the faith healer and it was literally days later when I had a hospital appointment through <clears throat> to see another consultant and he did take me seriously 
and there were lots more tests and they found out the complaint and he offered me a operation um, which he said was high risk but they could do it and I felt I felt that it was an answer from God that appointment so I accepted it and that was 31 years ago now and I've really been so well since. I really would like to share three significant um, verses uh, through which God has showed me his deep truth and that really have carried me through all my life since. Be joyful always, pray continuously and give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ. I went through a time of, of real darkness um, and where I was betrayed, lied to and hurt um, and also subject to uh, aggression. And somebody gave me this book called Pr From Prison to Praise with Colin Urquhart. Here he talked about um, f praising God in all circumstances and praising him even if you didn't feel like praising him or if you felt that what you're praising him for is actually not a good thing because he will you he is able to use whatever is not good for his glory he can turn it round and he can change situations completely and move mountains which you cannot see beyond so i made it my discipline to start praising god for every circumstance I praised him for weeks, for months, and one day I came to the point where I realized he was healing me inside. He didn't, he, he didn't change the situation, but I was changing. And, and it came to the point where I could completely forgive and where my attitude just ha took on a different turn. I realized then that God had to heal me first before he could move the mountain that was in front of me, which he did. He opened up a new, a new opportunity and I was able to remove myself from that difficult situation I was in. It wasn't long after a friend sent me a verse uh, which has given me great strength throughout my life and that's in Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope for the future. And God really encouraged me with this. It felt like, you know, he's had a plan, me a speck of dust in this world. He's had a plan for me and he will fulfill that plan and, and he will be there. And it will be a plan for, for good you know, for my good, for my benefit, as long as I stay close to him. And um, obviously I, I was then, I was alone with my two children. I raised them, um, I retrained as a nursery nurse and I um, had a really great job um, offered in the local school to start up a new nursery school and to run it. <clears throat> and so I did that for 10 years and God really blessed me really built me up as well. The third psalm is a psalm which I really wanted to share with you just to encourage you because um, it's just of him, it expresses God's immense love for us and that is Psalm 91. I just read a few verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress and my God in whom I trust. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. For he will com command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against. But looking back, there has never been a time in my Christian journey when God has forsaken me. Even during the most difficult times, he provided me with Christian friends. He cared for me and listened, and I can always trust him in every circumstance. So if you're not sure what to make of the Bible, if you think faith is just for people who want to crutch, or if you're sitting on the fence 
and you haven't really made that step of faith, all I can say to you that you would never regret it. Uh, we live in uncertain times now and God has not promised us an easy life, but he's promised us to be always with us and he's given us a message of hope and new beginnings and I certainly experienced that in my life over and over again.